Jack gets smacked. That's the focus of tonight's angle. It's been a wild week in lawfare land. The Get Trump Express may be headed for a derailment. First, the Supreme Court announced it was taking the Trump appeal on presidential immunity at the end of April. And you wouldn't know this, but guess what? Those who claim that these cases will protect the legitimacy of elections, the legitimacy of institutions, are now attacking the legitimacy of the high court for its decision. It's absolute partisan. This is garbage. This is an absolute disgusting abuse of power. They're putting nine weeks of days and they are burning them for Donald Trump in Donald Trump's interest so as to protect Donald Trump from the possibility of being held to account. Everyone needs to understand that is what they are doing. This is BS. You are doing this as a dilatory tactic to help your political, uh, your political friend, your partisan patron. That's disturbing about the future legitimacy of the court. Rachel's rule. When the court doesn't go our way, I'm meaning her way, it's illegitimate. They're flailing. Uh, once again, Donald Trump trying to run out the clock. Uh, we have to hope I, and pray that voters reject him uh, when they have a chance to vote this November so that if the Justice Department and justice has not been served, that it will be served after the election. Adam's still mad that that Mueller report didn't go his way. And the news kept getting worse for the democracy defenders. At a morning hearing in the classified docs case against President Trump, federal judge Aileen Cannon signaled that Jack Smith suggested July 8th trial date would be a no-go because the trial uh, time frame for all the motion work that has to be done would be far too compressed. That totally makes sense. Of course, Trump's lawyers want this travesty to be postponed until after the election. Or I have an idea. How about holding off until and unless Joe Biden is brought up on charges for his own concealment of government records? All right. Meanwhile, not a good idea to keep digging when you're already sinking. But that's what Smith's office did when his associate intimated that the judge wasn't moving quickly enough, to which she tersely replied, I can assure you that in this building, there's a good deal of judicial work going on. Ooh. Now, our reporters, David Spont and Jake Gibson, are reporting that if they had to choose a date for the federal appeal, Trump's legal team said they could do August 12th to avoid running right up into the election. Of course, if a trial takes, let's say, six weeks, which is what they're projecting, keeping Trump in a courtroom? Now, that's the ultimate in election interference, isn't it? But clearly, this guy just doesn't care. He's willing to dispense with the DOJ manual that highly discourages bringing cases against candidates that would impact the election because of the timing. It's a so-called 60-day rule, even though it doesn't mention 60 days. Of course, Smith's office says that they're in compliance. But really, they're willing to skirt the recommendations because, after all, there's always a Trump exemption. Now, regardless of when the trial starts, Trump's legal team has played this smartly so far and Judge Cannon's concern about the unfairness of a rush schedule. When you look at that calendar, I mean, you can really see what the judge was referring to, which is if Jack Smith tries to find a path for the federal cases, it's a very narrow path. Everything has to go exactly right. There can't be any winds that blow him off course. Now, keep this in mind. Smith brought the indictments last year, but Judge Cannon and Chutkin control their own calendars. The DOJ manual doesn't govern their scheduling final decisions at all. And Merrick Garland will become, I think, pressured to push these trials off until after the election if it turns out they're rolling over into the campaign. But how twisted this all is. They wage a multi-front campaign of lawfare against a leading presidential candidate interfering with the election because, again, they allege he interfered in the 2020 election. Now, Americans are seeing this for what it is, which is why Trump's numbers remain strong through this multi-layered legal charade. He's still up over Biden by six points. And that's the angle. Now, it's not just the timing of the federal trials that's up in the air. They may be taking the load off Fannie permanently, as in removing Fannie Willis from the case she brought in Fulton County uh, against Trump for election interference. 
Closing arguments took place today, and lawyers for the Trump co-defendants, well, I think they trounced. Miss Willis is telling everyone in that church and everyone that's going to hear that in the media afterwards that these defendants are guilty. The uncontroverted evidence shows that Mr. Wade lavishly spent on Miss Willis. The uncontroverted evidence shows that the money that he was spending on Miss Willis came from this contract. There is a direct financial benefit that Miss Willis received from this. I believe we've shown an actual conflict. That conflict is not just financial. It can be any conflict that impairs your independent professional judgment. That's really embedded in the prosecutor's oath to act impartially. That's the original sin from which all of the other problems flow. There's no boyfriend exception. Think of the message that would be sent if they were not disqualified. If this is tolerated, we'll get more of it. This office is a global laughing stock because of their conduct. That's an understatement. I love the there's no boyfriend ex exception line. That could have been my favorite. All right, of course, the state of Georgia rejected the idea that Fannie Willis's conduct with Mr. Wade or her church tirade amounted to any ethical breach. They even dismissed the idea that 12,000, I saw this, 12,000, who has that much to say, uh, of, of texts and calls between her and Mr. Wade, Wade was in any way significant in indicating the depth of their relationship. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.